Okay, so my name is Max Schrader, um, and today I'm presenting on the extension and validation of a NEMA style dual ring controller in Sumo. I was aided in this work by Dr. Chi Chao Wong and Dr. Joshua Biddle. Dr. Biddle and I are with the University of Alabama, and uh, Dr. Chi Chao Wong is from the National Renewable Energy Laboratories. And before I jump into the content, I think it's important to note that Dr. Chi Chao Wong and his colleagues presented on a very similar topic at Sumo Users Conference 2021, where they presented their work in incorporating a dual ring style controller into Sumo. We then, in the fall and early, uh, and in winter of this year, um, extended and validated that work. And so that's what we're presenting on today. So I'm gonna talk about um, what the motivation for including a dual ring controller into Sumo is, what is a NEMA style dual ring controller, and then and we'll touch on the validation framework that we used, um, including simulation-based tests and fuzz testing. And then we'll go into our validation results. And finally, just a brief overview of the features that we added and the future work we see, as well as then acknowledgements. So onto the background. So why add a NEMA style dual ring controller to Sumo? Um, it's been our impression at the University of Alabama that uh, the lack of a dual ring controller inside of Sumo has discouraged North American users for, from using Sumo. Um, if North American traffic modelers wanted to use Sumo and model a uh, traffic network that had dual ring style traffic light controllers inside of it, they had to make a tough choice. Um, either they could build a custom SIL setup or software in the loop setup with an external traffic light controller module, or they... Um, could use a built-in Sumo controller and lose model fidelity. Um, in both cases, they're making sacrifices. So here at the University of Alabama, we wanted to use Sumo to model a corridor in the US, and we didn't wanna to have to sacrifice on model speed or fidelity. And so for us, that meant ultimately building a NEMA style dual ring controller into Sumo source. Um, so then moving on, what is a NEMA style dual ring controller? Um, I think the first thing to clear up here is some of the language used around it. So you may hear me or others refer to it as a NEMA controller, a NEMA dual ring controller, ring and barrier controller. And all these terms basically refer to the core logic of the controller. And that is that there's this concept of rings and barriers, which we'll see on the next slide, um, that really determine how the controller works. And there's several manufacturers in the U.S. Um, there's Econolite, Siemens, and you all might be familiar with some of these Aldridge traffic and traffic signal controllers. Um, and over to the right, you see an image of a modern uh, Econolite controller. And actually, on, on that display, you start to see the uh, the ring and barrier diagram, which if you work with dual ring controllers, you're very familiar with. <clears throat> so now getting into more about how these dual ring controllers really operate. Um, for this slide, I'm going to be talking about this intersection down here on the bottom right. Um, this is kind of numbered in the way that a typical American intersection would be numbered. There's a major street, there's a minor street. The major street has six and two as its through movements, and then one and five as its turning movements. Um, and then the minor street is three, eight, four, seven. I'm also gonna spend a fair amount of time on this slide, so just heads up. Um, and uh, so in kind of contradiction to the way Sumo uh, refers to its phases when it comes to the traffic light definitions, a NEMA phase is just a single movement. Um, and so uh, the the actual, I guess, a Sumo phase can, is, can uh, is made up of really two NEMA phases. Um, and those two NEMA phases can only be a certain combination. And the way that combination is uh, designated is it's one from ring one and then one from ring two. And not only that, they also have to be on the same side of the barrier. So these uh, double vertical gray lines are the barriers. And so the only actual valid combination of phases that can be served together at any given time are one and five, one and six, two and five, two and six. And that's on the main line. And then on the uh, minor street, three, seven is a valid phase, three, eight, and then four, seven, four, eight. 
And each one of these phases individually has its own minimum timer, its own maximum timer, and then there's also a vehicle extension timer. And so the vehicle extension timer in certain operating modes is used to um, extend the phase past its minimum time up until its maximum time if, the, if a vehicle is detected on that actuating detector. Um, the only other thing I'm not really going to go into detail here is how coordination operates, but uh, coordination is commonly used and that just enforces a cycle length on this whole process. So then kind of just briefly going through what a typical progression would look like. So if we're currently in 1.5, and that means serving the, uh, the left turns on the major street, um, then a common transition would be go to 2.6, which is the heaviest traffic uh, uh, movements typically. Um, and then so we're in 2.6. And then let's say that there's a vehicle detected on 7. Well, we can't do that because that's a barrier cross event. And obviously in the diagram, you can see that serves uh, conflicting traffic movements and that could lead to a, a, a wreck. So that's not allowed. Um, but from 2.6, we can't actually go to 3.8. So in this case, let's say there's a vehicle on 3 and there's also a vehicle on 8. And this shows the capability of phase skipping. So phase skipping is used, increases the efficiency of the uh, intersection. Um, and it's just one of the little intricacies of these controllers that they can phase skip. Um, so, so now that we know how a NEMA controller works, we'll go into uh, how we validated and, uh, and added features. So at the University of Alabama, we're simulating a three intersection corridor here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And the traffic volumes in this network are calibrated based on real world detector counts. And then importantly for this project, the controllers in the field actually are running um, Econolite EOS software, which meant that we had the capability to download the configuration files from those controllers in the field and then load them onto software in the loop controllers that we can run on our computers. And so doing this, we're able to generate baselines that you'll see in subsequent slides that we uh, validate the NEMA implementation inside of Sumo source against. Um, and so here's a uh, kind of complicated slide uh, or busy slide on the, uh, the SIL setup that, that we uh, built for this project. So um, over on the right is what the GUI for that Econolite EOS controller looks like, specifically this SIL uh, controller that runs on our computers. And then over on the left, you see the Sumo simulation. And sitting in the middle is, is Python and Tracy and basically just passing messages between the two. So you have the light state from the SIL controller is, or is reflected in Sumo, and then you have the detector states from Sumo are sent back to that software in the loop controller. Um, happy to go into more detail uh, of this framework in the questions or if you reach out to me afterwards, but I'm gonna skip it for now. Um, and so here should be a video of uh, our SIL framework running. Um, you can see it, it's, it, well, here I have it slowed down and delayed a little bit, but uh, it's capable of running pretty quickly, but nowhere near uh, the speed of native Sumo. And uh, just as kind of proof of proof of it working, you can see that uh, if you're able to see that, hopefully, um, the light states from these virtual controllers are being uh, reflected in Sumo, and then the detector calls from these controllers, uh, or from Sumo is then being reflected in the controller. And these controllers are running the exact configuration files that the controllers out in the field are actually running on a day-to-day -day basis. <clears throat> so doing the, doing the software in the loop test gave us a good baseline for how the controller works in the face of realistic traffic, but it's only really a a small subset of you know the traffic that a controller could see and so we wanted to have a lot of confidence that this controller that we implemented in sumo source code was working as desired and wouldn't basically fail and so we defined failing as being um, with, with the following assertions that the green time for any phase had to be at least its minimum duration that there could never be a barrier cross event which you saw earlier um, and that the coordinated phase in coordinated mode must start, or the coordinated phases must be green by the start of the coordinated time. 
And so this uh, fuzz testing framework uh, used Python. We ran the simulations without any traffic in the network and just uh, used Python and the Tracy API to override the detectors and send them a random combination of detector calls, both length and uh, occurrence. And you can see that in this plot down below. Um, and I'm not going to touch on the, I guess, the results uh, later on in this presentation. Um, basically, it's just kind of like a pass fail. We, we ran millions of seconds of simulation time and we were able to find if there was an assertion or a failing event, we were able to replay, catch exactly what was happening in the logic and, uh, and fix that. So um, this gave us a really high confidence ultimately that that NEMA controller that is inside of SUMA right now will never do anything dangerous and, and is operating as it should. Um, so then going into the validation results for the SIL setup, um, before I talk too much, just an overview of how this <coughs> plot down at the bottom works. Um, this plot is comparing the software in the loop controller to the uh, SUMO native controller and plotted slightly above the y-axis is the uh, the Sumo native controller, and then slightly below is that software in the loop controller. And the whole point of this is just to get these plots to match up uh, as as closely as possible. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, and uh, and so we started with coordinated mode and validating coordinated mode because for us at the University of Alabama, these three intersections operate almost exclusively in coordinated mode. And so it was of higher importance to us. And then also it has fewer degrees of freedom. Um, there's slightly stricter timing uh, enforced on the controller, which means basically there's less room for air uh, between the, the software in the loop and the, the controller in Sumo. Um, and going through this whole validation process led to several, several findings and, and additions to the code in Sumo. Um, <clears throat> Some of these uh, <laughs> these uh, uh, progressions that we see here, like two six three seven two five two six, that's kind of a normal progression. Um, two six four eight two six is a progression we see, uh, and in this one, there's this what we call phase fit. Um, it's a kind of an econolite specific, possibly econolite specific uh, way of operating where the timing parameters change a little bit. Um, we also see a green transfer event. And uh, again, for brevity, I'll kind of skip over, explain this too much, but uh, happy to answer these questions, any questions later. Um, and then there's also free mode. So coordinated mode, there's restrictions on timing. There's a cycle length. In free mode, there is no cycle length. Every phase can be served for its minimum time up to its maximum time. And the time is fully dependent on uh, the vehicle actuation of the detectors. And so, in this mode, there's um, there's more degrees of freedom and there's more room for there to be some discrepancies between these plots, uh, which you can see in the beginning of these plots, there is quite a bit of discrepancy. Um, however, when we really dig down into when these detector calls came in relative to the controller's internal timers, we see that there's not really a difference in the internal behavior. Um, it comes down to the kind of a cascading effect of having three intersections as well as the asynchronous one step nature of using the web sockets for the, uh, the SIL, um, SIL framework that we developed. So although these plots look different, you can see the second half, they, they uh, are, are basically exactly the same. And so um, we do have a lot of confidence that free mode is working correctly. <clears throat> and then real briefly, um, we'll go into a code rundown. So all the code that we developed is inside of the Sumo source. Um, it, there's also documentation available, a whole page of documentation available on Sumo's website. Um, the, the code that we developed is inside of the traffic lights directory of the, of the Sumo source code. And then in version 1.13.0, which came out last week, um, it, the code's actually been rewritten to be a more object-oriented approach, and there's uh, three main objects. Um, and then there's also reproducible tests available um, in the Sumo test directory. And then, yeah, real quickly, uh, so the features we added as part of this work are green rest, green transfer, fully actuated mode, latching detectors, cross-phase switching, uh, phase recall, fixed flow, fixed float force off and TS2 style offsets. And there are still some missing 
um, features that we see. There's pedestrian phasing, detector delay, net edit support, uh, TS1 style offsets, explicit dual entry, and load state supports. And I just want to make a note here that um, we've kind of built this controller out to where we want to have it for, for our use here at the University of Alabama. Um, there's still one or two of these uh, issues that I'm, I'm interested in and we're interested in, but uh, definitely welcome the open source community and everyone who's using Sumo to extend these features, validate it for yourself. Um, this is a big effort and happy to have as many people as we can working on it. Um, and then finally, acknowledgements. Huge shout out to the whole Sumo team, uh, especially Jacob Erdman for his support uh, through GitHub discussions and pull requests and issues. <coughs> as well as uh, test case validation. And then also uh, Dr. Chi Chao Wong for uh, his early development of the controller that was a massive work. And then uh, his support through the validation and the inclusion of the, of the additional features. We had lots of discussions. Um, and then I just wanna point you to the fact that uh, this work will also be available in the conference proceedings for this year's Sumo conference. Okay, so any questions?